Hi guys, this is Matt from Innovision Press and uh, I want to make a quick Photoshop tutorial on how to make your pictures even more awesome than we did last time. Here's some that I did previously in Photoshop. Basically it's going to be a Photoshop tutorial and these are the ones that will be uploaded soon. If you want to check them out quick. And I'll show you how you can make photos like this stand out, look really great too. Anyway, let's uh, press on and dive right in. This is a photo I took in uh, Hemfield in Sussex out walking my mum's dog and uh, let me show you the original twit, original quick and the other thing is I don't want this video to be too long really so I'm going to have to uh, get on with it and find you a nice photo to edit this is the original As you can see it's quite dark and quite underexposed and this is what we did in Photoshop and I'll show you how you can achieve that effect so anyway let's find a nice picture to work on and uh, we'll open it in Photoshop and I'll show you a few techniques a lot of this um, tutorial is based on stuff I learnt from the Flern website with Aaron Nace who does particularly good tutorials on Photoshop that looks like a promising picture 516 okay that's that's the one that's jumped out of me 516 so let's uh, go ahead and open it in Photoshop I'm using Cam Studio by the way to record this, it works really well. Ignore Camera Raw, go Open Image, we'll open it directly in Photoshop. I just reconfigured the, the workspace a bit because I couldn't stand the um, layer dialog being in the way all the time so uh, if you use the arrows there it gives you a larger workspace just like minimizing that window and then what you can do is just pop out layers and then you can move it around and have it wherever you want so if you want to um, move it out of the way when you're working on it and it snaps the grid so you can put it to the side easily or you can put it back in the uh, context menu so that's good and I also configured um, zoom with my wheel mouse in and out so I don't have to keep holding the alt key so the way that I would do this is I would merge two HDR images so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two different exposures of this image and merge them together using Photoshop and um, it's quite an easy way to do this and I'll show you how to do it what you do is you duplicate your layer by pressing Control J or uh, right clicking and choosing duplicate layer and click on your new layer make a curves adjustment layer now what I want to do on this, I want to wind up the brightness quite a lot, I don't want to increase the highlights too much so what you can do is you can control the highlights of this part of the curve and the shadows of this part so you can actually um, control which part you want to brighten if you want to fix your brightness for your highlights if you're quite happy with the highlights where they are rather than becoming over bright you can actually fix that point so I want my highlights to stay there and I still want to increase the uh, shadows so what I've done is I've turned up the uh, brightness of the shadows 
and fix my highlights so they don't become whitewashed press OK so you've got a nice brighter version of your original what I'm looking for is I'm looking for to highlight the foreground not too worried about colors and things at this stage because we can work on that in Photoshop anyway then you merge the layers you can do that right mouse click merge layers or you can do control E I believe okay so that's that one it's the original and then you highlight one and then duplicate your background layer again this time you move it up above so it's the uh, highest layer and this time we want to turn it down a bit because we're making high dynamic range of course remember so create another curves adjustment layer the thing I don't like about CS3 is you can't resize the adjustment window so you're stuck with this big blobby window that covers over the image that you're working on anyway we want to turn that down because you want to give it that dark dynamic range again press OK and merge that to the background layer and shift clicking to select your um, layers and I have a right mouse click or control E to merge them ok and then you turn off the top layer if you want anyway what we need to do is add a layer mask make sure you clicked on the layer mask go to image and apply image and you want to invert it because we want to be highlighting the shadows click OK OK and this time we're going to do the same thing put a layer mask on the dark version gives it image apply image and this time we want to remove the invert because we don't want it to be so dark we want to brighten the shadows click OK and there you go so if, if we look at the alt click on the background you see the original and the after so anyway that's coming on but it still doesn't look great so what I'll do is I'll create a stamp visible layer which is control shift alt n for a new layer and then e to make a duplicate of everything that's visible so it doesn't affect your picture at all except when you work on it and I'm going to go to image adjustments shadows and highlights now shadows and highlights always starts at 50% which is way too high what we want to do is increase the uh, shadow somewhat about how to create a high dynamic image there we go, if we turn down the highlights and colour correct which is like saturation on the fly and just play about with the mid-tones See a lot of the uh, foreground is mid-tone. I don't want to lose too much contrast with the sky, so I could make the uh, foreground look really great, but then we'd, I wouldn't like the background. And it's the clouds really that I want to uh, have the emphasis on. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to brighten and saturate the foreground a bit, but without ruining the cloud effect and the way that I do this is choose a curves adjustment layer and I want to increase the brightness so I'm just looking at the foreground at the moment and I want to also step up the greens ok back to the RGB channel just concentrating on the foreground because I want to brighten the foreground but I don't really want to affect everything so if we turn that layer off by making it black make sure you clicked on the layer 
and then you can either have your foreground colour as black and use alt delete which will fill the layer with black or you can select the uh, layer and use control I which will invert it and what we do is we get a white brush and we paint on the areas we want to highlight normally set my brush to 50% opacity and 50% flow so that gives me a bit of room to manoeuvre if I make a mistake or if I don't like the effect and also means I can make multiple passes in certain areas what I'm trying to do is just bring out some colour in the foreground and brighten it up a bit quite like that tree this one dark so I'm going to leave that now some of this has been affected quite nicely by that but some of it didn't work so well like these trees didn't work so well so if I go back to a black brush can I actually darken these up again give them more shadow and this one as well got a bit washed out in the process lost a bit of detail so I'm just reducing the brightness in that area make that tree look a bit nicer and that one now this is a good thing about being able to move your, di your layers dialogue out of the way this looks a bit unrealistic very bright green so just darken that up a bit there we go that's not too bad this is what a layer mask looks like incredibly ok now wh what I want to do is I want to highlight certain areas of the image and I want to bring out the colours in them so the way we do it is to create a new layer and it's a blank layer there's no pixels on it so we don't need to worry about ruining the image to turn your brush into an eyedropper to select you just press alt I want to select the um, orange colours in the clouds basically so I select that and then the, that becomes my foreground down here and go to select colour range and you just select how much of that colour you want to be visible also I don't want the whole lot selected so I'm just going to concentrate on the orange highlights click OK and that makes it a selection and then grab an adjustment layer curves adjustment layer curves adjustment layer OK what it's done is it's made the layer mask just highlight though that particular colour range that I selected which is basically the clouds and now I can work on those separately so what I want to do is I want to increase the brightness and the orangeness of those clouds so double click on the layer thumbnail to bring up the curves dialog again and I can work on just that area separately So let's just brighten that selection and I want to increase the reds a little bit a nice pink hue an orange glow and if I go to the blues and turn down the blues that will make it more yellow you can see that's a nice effect also I want to make the clouds more blue so I'm going to do the same thing, go back to the layer I drop a tool with with the brush selected and then press alt and just select anywhere on the clouds get a nice blue area select colour range I want a lot of the clouds but I don't want a lot of the foreground so just make sure we've got the bright areas in the cloud OK. That's selected the cloud. 
Now don't worry about these bits that are selected that you don't want to adjust because you can remove them from the layer mask. Curves adjustment layer. Just click OK and that makes the layer mask. Now this is what the layer mask looks like. You can see it's selected a lot of the foreground as well. Well I don't really want to particularly adjust the foreground well it does look a bit green could probably benefit from a bit of blue in it but anyway if we didn't want to adjust the foreground what we do is we get a black brush and we just paint it out so I'm going to leave it in at the moment and I might adjust it after I've made the adjustments so double click the layer thumbnail and what I'm doing is I'm just concentrating on the clouds now I'm not too worried about the foreground because I can remove any adjustments to that afterwards OK, clouds. I want to reduce the brightness of the clouds a bit because I want it more contrast. Enough to still see a bit of colour in them. OK, that's good. And I want to increase the blues. But not a great deal because you don't see very blue clouds. But they do so have a blue tint sometimes like that and you can see it actually brought some clarity back to the foreground as well so I'm going to leave that in now if you didn't like that on the foreground what you would have to do is click on your layer mask make sure you've got a black brush selected you can toggle between black and white which switches between the foreground and the background colours by the way with this little wonky arrow here and make sure you've got a black brush selected and you just paint over areas where you didn't want that effect all it's done is uh, added the effect while I wanted on the clouds and put it on the uh, some of the blues in the foreground as well but I quite like the effect because the foreground was a bit bright it's kind of toned it down a bit so yeah that's looking quite nice now now there's a couple of other things we can do one of the things is we can highlight certain areas by sharpening them and then we can use blur on other areas that we don't want very sharp which is also quite a nice technique and the way we do that is we do the sharpening one first so we'll make a new stamp visible layer control shift alt n for a new layer e to make a visible stamp visible layer which doesn't affect your image at all except when you work on it and then can we control alt u to unsaturate it okay then we change that to we change the uh, layer mode to linear light and go to filter other and high pass and that puts a high pass sharpening filter on it and you can see that as we turn that up it becomes very sharp and linear but as we turn it down it's just made the uh, trees and things particularly sharper and the clouds so what I want to do is I just want to sharpen the foreground just a little bit in certain areas but I don't want it to look unrealistic so the magic figure I've heard is good to work with is about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 pixels you know, it's up to you how sharp you want things really but it starts to look a bit unrealistic if you over, over sharpen it so I just want a little bit of sharpening to bring attention to the foreground a bit actually I'd like to sharpen, concentrate on sharpening the clouds rather than the foreground so I'm going to uh, turn it up a little bit higher about 2, 2, 2.4 this looks pretty good I want nice sharp detail in the clouds, click OK but I don't want that everywhere so I'm going to apply a layer mask now if you press ALT when you apply a layer mask it automatically puts a black layer mask on it so that hides the effect uh, if we uh, click on the layer mask and invert it you can see it's quite a lot of sharpening but I mostly want that effect on the cloud so uh, what I'm going to do, and I don't want it totally on the clouds, so I'm just going to apply some of it. So let's hide that layer. 
and just paint it on with a white brush this time I've got my opacity set to 50 and my flow set to 50 I'm just going to paint this on areas of the cloud where I want sharpening so there's all the nice detail in the cloud I'm just going to literally sharpen it with my brush using the linear light and the high pass filter and the good thing about a layer mask is you don't have to be too accurate don't have to worry but if you get a bit of the trees in it because some sharpening around the edges of the trees looks pretty good see now just the edges of the trees and the clouds are being sharpened just a little bit now the opposite is to apply blur to areas where you don't want sharpening for example, for example in these mid tones you want to draw attention away from away from the middle of the image but perhaps leave the foreground sharp and the cloud sharp and the way we do this is create a new stamp visible layer control shift alt n for a new layer E for a stamp visible layer and unsaturate that again control shift U now this time we want to invert it so control I and then we're going to change the blending mode to soft light and that gives it a very soft strange saturated effect if we go to filter other high pass then we can adjust that effect basically we want it what I'm concentrating on is areas of the image that have that very soft focus effect where I don't want too much attention to it now I'm only going to apply this to the areas I want with a layer mask but you can have it like really fuzzy or not very fuzzy at all and I want that nice soft focus effect and I want a bit of saturation as well so it'll still maintain nice colours but it won't be so uh, sharp so I can apply quite a lot of that, let's go for about 43, looks good click OK apply a black layer mask to that by pressing ALT grab a white brush and then just paint on the effect where you want to re reduce attention in the image so it's too it's too much clutter and detail in the foreground at the moment I like the sharpening in the tree I just want to make this more easier on the eye and it so you can focus on the clouds so just let's just paint this on paint this fuzzy effect on I'm just going to try it in the middle range of the image and I'm going to want that to be the most part to draw attention away from that middle range and I want the same effect but not so much see this is this will be almost white on the layer mask I want the same effect but not as much on the rest of the image so I'm just going to do a couple of passes on these so now what we have is we have a nice sharp cloudy contrasty high dynamic clouds and a nice warm saturated fuzzy image in the foreground just to finish off if you um, create a new layer and you want to just highlight certain areas of the image, say the foreground you want more contrast, just put a contrast, brightness contrast layer on it click OK and they have a nice colourful high dynamic range image if, uh, if you're not happy with it you can always adjust it later, but I like the um, dramatic effect click OK and there we have it, if I group those layers you can see uh, the before and the after
quick way to do it is just alt on your background alt click on the uh, eye thumbnail there's the before and there's the after and I think you'll agree that's uh, quite a dynamic effect and the other way to do it is you can select all your layers by shift clicking or holding down control and individually selecting them and then drag all those layers down to the little folder which creates a new group you can switch the group on and off individually now the great thing about it is you can go into any of those layers and adjust those certain areas individually any of those adjustments you made, that's the good thing about layer adjustments you can just go into them afterwards and uh, make adjustments if you're not happy with them anyway that's my high dynamic range image and hope you like the tutorial sorry I'm uh, mumbling a bit towards the end but it was a bit longer than I expected and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it but anyway hope you like it, that's my little video thanks very much for watching Oh dear, I didn't really want to edit this video, but I might have to when I get round to it. It was 8.0 something.